Welcome to another evil Pinely summer. Today, we're gonna be talking about something that actually didn't happen in the summer at all. <laughs> As you usually do in the summer, the summer is the best time of the year to reflect on what happened in the other months, meaning I, this is still in theme. Don't at me. So today's video is about this knitting festival that happened. Just an interesting kind of story. So this was a wool and folk festival, uh, 2023. Sadly, sales have ended, but I guess that makes sense because it happened like, like a bunch of months ago. The festival is a traveling event for wool and music lovers. When reading this the first time, I, I honestly imagined that the festival would be like a ball of yarn on a stage, like with the guitar in front of it, uh, uh, like jamming out. This is just how wonderful my, my imagination is. You will never, you will never know the wonderful things that go on in my brain. Our mission is to create community by hosting events that foster connection amongst all people in the fiber chain. Promote handmade goods, support local musicians, local wool, local makers, local food, and celebrate the diverse makeup of our fiber community. The first festival was in 2021, had hundreds of people, 2022 had thousands of people. Can't wait to see what 2023 has in store. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if that one's gonna age well. <laughs> so the wool festival was announced, all the wool lovers were hyped up. You know, the first one had hundreds of people, second one had thousands. What is this one gonna have? Tens of thousands? They announce where it's gonna happen, but then. The maybe in over her head following the last minute change in venue from Stone Ridge Orchard to Foreland, an events venue located at a repurposed industrial site in Catskill, New York. The stated reason for the move was to provide more indoor space for the vendors in the event of inclement weather, which... Which, uh, yeah, okay, she's saying spoiler. I'm gonna say spoiler alert too. <laughs> a very ironic... Uh, kind of sentence. By the way, this person is called Big Softy Knits. That's a good name. They said that they changed the venue because they needed more space for vendors in case of bad weather. The event was said to have 3,000 people, but reportedly the capacity of the venue sat at like 500. Before it even began, Redditors on the Craft Snark uh, Reddit page had an inkling that it would be a nightmare, but even they couldn't predict how disastrous the event would turn out to be. The event was set to have 3,000 attendees, while Forland, the venue they switched to, had a capacity of 500 people. Apparently, the last minute change in venue occurred because an organizer named Felicia failed to get the proper permit. Days before the event, the Wool and Folk Instagram shared parking information with several lots and shuttles about a quarter mile from the venue. Comments on the post have since been turned off due to what really happened. Using these photos, we can kind of kind of simulate the experience of what a day at this festival looked like. Tomorrow we're going to Woolen Folk to see if it's really as big of a shit show as it sounds like it's going to be. And Saturday we'll be at a, a different place. Then they posted, there's one check-in tent with approximately two, no three, members working on it. Did they, you, what, did they stutter? <laughs> did they stutter through text? You can start, you can just write three from the get-go. But I do like the cinematic way of putting it, so that's okay. And the folks getting off the super convenient shuttles, which is what they were referring to in that post, who even already have wristbands, are being made to wait at the back of the line anyway. And then, uh, bad weather struck. It's almost like foreshadowing. They talked about, they, they foreshadowed themselves. They were like, oh, we're moving to this place because to, to protect ourselves from the weather. And then the weather became the conflict of the story. That is incredible stuff. Okay, I know the organizers can't control the weather, but also they can, they can control the weather. You don't know who the organizers are. They could be some sort of godly kind of being. Don't underestimate their abilities. And then the weather really became a problem. Wow, this is f bad. I know the weather is the weather, but a, a, but a bunch of vendors are set up on a fucking hill. The weather is the weather, but if you moved your, if you moved your location because of the weather, there's a ways to prepare for it. You knew that the weather is going to be bad. Literally a fucking swamp with a cardboard box band-aid on it. <laughs> I love this person has a beautiful way with words. And again, I know the organizers can't control the weather. They can, or at least should have, control where they put the vendors who should not have been vending on an unpaved 
fucking hell, which was absolutely not mobility aid friendly. That is true. So this YouTuber, TL Yarn Crafts, was invited to do like a podcast, I think, during the festival, and she made a video talking about the whole experience. Let's take a deep dive into my latest visit to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Yes, we are gonna talk about wool and folk. Spoiler alert, many spoiler alerts in this video. It was as bad as you've heard it was. Check in with, is there somewhere special I need to park? And unfortunately I wasn't replied to. Even the day before the event, when I texted the organizer that I'd been working this all out with, I never got a response. Something in my gut told me that this was gonna be an issue, particularly because the forecast called for heavy rain all weekend. So yeah, already, <laughs> already, uh, already bad signals coming from it. She was literally invited to be there, the organizers are just not talking to her. Uh, a shit show before the, 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 the gods of thunder even struck the, the Wool and Folk Festival. Then she starts talking about the process of actually getting into the event. We've seen in the post a little bit about how bad that was. There were issues from the very, very beginning. Once I got there, it was really hard to find out who I was meant to see and who I was meant to work with. There was one long line heading into the event, but it turns out there were two other locations that she could have checked in at, but that information was not communicated to the people in line. So I was able to bypass the line, find one of the other check-in areas, and I got in like that. Already stupid. <laughs> Again. Bad, bad, bad organization stuff. Didn't they have thousands of people the year before that? What, what, what happened then? Here's some visuals on kind of how the event was set up. Um, there was a giant tent right in the middle of what I... Okay, I'm visualizing a giant tent right in the middle of... It was either a parking lot or some kind of just like area off the side of the... What I think might be a parking lot or some area on the side of it. I forgot what she said. There was a big tent in the middle. I can imagine it. I can visualize it in my head. There were two big buildings that had vendors in them as well. So they were kind of, I guess that's maybe part of the reason as to why they moved to the different location because there's some outside area, some indoor area. Additional smaller tents throughout the area. Which turned into a swamp. <laughs> Shrek must have loved this festival. Shrek, Shrek, if he went to that festival, he would have had a blast. Just, you know, he's a fan of good music and, and swamps. You know, this is, this is a Shrek festival, really. One of those spaces where there's not a clear path of travel. Like it wasn't a U shape, it wasn't an S shape. There were buildings and people all over the place. The booths were different sizes. Some of them you could walk into, some of them it was a very narrow access. So yeah, that was a layout essentially. The experience going out and shopping in this, in this uh, festival, this festival that is half about listening to music, half about shopping, also didn't seem to be ideal to say the least. Sadly though, the entire situation was so cramped and uncomfortable that I didn't really have the opportunity to slow down and walk through the booths. I wouldn't say that I have claustrophobia, but I do feel a way when there's just too many people in a space and you could just tell that we were far over capacity of what that space could hold. Also it was wet, so the stairs were slippery and I was like, you know what? I just need to get out of this building. Yeah, thousands of people in a cramped space while it's all slippery and wet. That. That's bad. <laughs> and that's already bad for someone who's fully able-bodied. In terms of accessibility, like that is a fucking nightmare. If you have some sort of physical disability, it seems like the situation would be like way, way, way fucking worse. It doesn't seem like they've really accommodated for that. It would have made this a poor event. I was especially frustrated at one point when I was walking up to the Sorella booth, which was a ramp, and there was a lady in a wheelchair needing to come down the ramp. Now, I was right in front of her and there were maybe a good 10 or 15 people behind me. I had to turn around and tell everyone to get off of the ramp so this lady could come down. The fact that the ramp was not even wide enough for you to walk two by two meant that we had to evacuate the ramp before this lady could even move. Yeah, just a shit show really. Seems super, super, super inconsiderate. There was a very interesting post from that subreddit we mentioned earlier, uh, Craft Snark, that also talks about the experience of going there just as a normal goer. The YouTuber we just listened to was there as like an invited guest for the festival and her experience was like dog shit. So let's see what happened to a person who went there as a vendor as well. It's a pretty long post, so we're not gonna read all of it, but uh, they say that they paid 1,800 for two 10 by 10 booths. My whole week was planned on the information provided in the contract and the subsequent emails. I asked if there was adequate parking for load-in, especially for vendors with trailers, and I was told yes. They were told yes, yes you do. Everything here is gonna be adequate, don't worry about it. My display was planned 
on a 10 by 20 booth. I brought enough product to fill said 10 by 20 booth. We were not given a vendor map prior to the event. Should have been red flag number one. We were not given a load in schedule like promised. Another red flag. So they were forced to park a quarter of a mile away from the venue in order to unload their trailer. Like to walk that distance, you know, in general, not ideal, but whatever. If you're loading up like products for a full booth, that distance off of a van, that is shit. There was no centralized vendor check-in. You had to track down a person you've never met before and hope they could tell you where to go. They had a hand-drawn map, like with a crayon. I had to double check my placement several times when questioned why this did not look like a 10 by 20. I was told I only paid for a 10 by 15, which I mean, according to them, that's very much not the case. Yeah, feel free to check out the full post. The gist of it is this though. The entire experience was a total nightmare. I 100% do not recommend anyone to vent at this event ever. The organizers did not care about the smaller vendors. The chosen few were completely set up on Wednesday without all of the smaller vendors getting in their way. I truly feel bad for the vendors that were placed outside without their knowledge, which is a thing that happened. A lot of vendors did not know that they're gonna be stuck out there in the storm. It is one thing to know you were vending outside and is another to be told at the venue you would be vending outside. Absolutely. Since then, the whole festival was kind of dubbed uh, the, the Fiber Fest, like Fire Fest. Do you know that, that one? That happened, that was bad. That, like, there was like a documentary about that. So then Wolen Folk, they, they wrote like a, like a YouTuber apology after this whole uh, kind of shit show happened. They blocked all comments, so that's that's pretty cool. To the wool and folk community, I want to apologize to the knitting community. The transition to a new venue this year was more challenging than I could have ever anticipated. Logistics coupled with the severity of the rainstorm made accessibility and crowd control difficult for us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sincerely sorry that our accessibility goals were not met and I'm equally disappointed in the way the day transpired. I had hoped and envisioned a great experience for everyone. I will be taking a hard look at the ways that I can improve Wool and Folk and promise to bring you the wonderful and inclusive Wool and Folk event that you have grown to love. In the original thing, they, they like mentioned the word inclusive and then the festival was very much not accessibility wise at least. To the vendors, I offer an apology to you. What about like money? <laughs> what about offering the money? instead of, of just uh, an apology. Wool and Folk will continue to promote your business by sending emails to our guests with links to your sites in order to support your business. Okay. To the Wool and Folk sponsors, I appreciate your support and understand that this was disappointing for you as well. Thank you for supporting Wool and Folk and I hope that we can continue to do better for your brand as we grow together. I learned some hard lessons, uh, goodbye. <laughs> Do you guys have like any good conventions that, that you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> the main conventions I go to are, you know, just ones related to my job, like YouTube ones. So outside of that world, my main perspective is through uh, like shit shows like this or like videos from Amanda from Swell Entertainment. And I think with her videos, I mainly click on the ones where it's like, this festival went wrong. So do you guys have any good ones that you'd recommend? And also, let me know in the comments. What crimes have you been committing this evil Pinely summer? Have you been stealing things? If so, that's a good thing. That's what evil Pinely summer is all about. And you should be stealing more things if, if you haven't stolen anything already. Remember, don't stay hydrated and don't wear any sunscreen. Uh, sub subscribe.